Hi everyone. So last time we talked about how to create Firebase project and how to connect the Firebase project to your app and all. This was the first video of the series. So if you have not checked that, please go and check that first before you continue into this one. So what are we going to do in this video? We're going to actually set up a full authentication system using Firebase. So let's re recap what we did the last time. So last time, if you remember, we created the Firebase project. First of all, we went to Firebase here in the console and I created this project. And uh, also what we did last time that we also enabled the authentication here inside the project. And we also added the providers, which were like Google and the uh, email and password. And also you need to do the same thing in Firebase. So we enabled the authentication as well, and also when we went to sign, sign in methods, we also enabled the email and password and Google. So you have to do this in the, the console of Firebase and also inside Noah. So you need to do it both ways. All right, so we did all of this, and we talked about that when you sign in for the first time, you need to create apps, So, but uh, it was explained in the last video. And we also talked about here that when you want to deploy your app, if you are using Google sign in, you need to add the SHA fingerprint to your Firebase project. Okay, here I got disconnected, so I need to connect again. I need to give permission again to 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 the project. Okay, so we talked about that here when you go uh, when you click on the SHA, and when you release your app to Android or to the Play Store, then you need to use the key that you use to sign the app and extract the SHA key from it, and then add it here, and it will add it automatically to the Firebase console. This is only when you want to release to, to Android, but for debugging, you don't need to do that. So we did all of this, and now let's go actually do the actual uh, authentication setup. So we have this to-do app, where we're gonna build it completely. So in this video, we're gonna explain the authentication, and in the next video, you can actually use a Firestore to store tasks and to create new tasks and to do the full to-do app. So let's go a little bit and you know, view the screens together. So we have a splash screen first, we created, and we had this linear indicator here, and we have the the, 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 the SVG image here, which is a logo for an app, and this is the sign up page, where you can create an account using email and password, and here is a sign in page, where you can log in, and here it's a page for resetting the password. So if you forgot the password for your email, you use this form to send a reset password. And here is the home screen where you're going to see the tasks for you. And here it's a pop up, a dialog that you can use to add a new task. And this is the component that will present a single task. This is the whole UI. Now, there's a lot of videos on how to do UI in NOAA. So I didn't want to put more time in the video to explain the UI for this. We will do another one later where we're going to use the API to build this to do app. But for now, I already have the UI ready. So the first thing is I have now the create account as my home screen. So when I click on play, I can uh, the app will start from the create account. Now, later we're going to change that, but I'm going to do this only because we're going to start with this page. So now, before we even think about Firebase, uh, for the create account, I need to add validation. To the form. So what do I need? Okay, uh, let me actually close this panel first. So what I'm talking about, that here, before I even send the data to Firebase to create an account for the user, I need to check if the user actually included the right email or an email in the first place, and if the password also matches some conditions. So how are we going to do that? So in the text field here, by the way, I already uh, designed the text field. You can do the design here from the uh, from the details panel. And when you drop a text field, it comes automatically with an object that's called controller. And you can use this object later to grab data from the text field in the logic. So first, the, th the first thing I want to do is to change the name. So it drops automatically with this autom uh, automatic text, which is like text one or text. But I don't want that. I want to have it to be more clear. So I will edit the variable, and I will call it email field. 
and I will do the same thing for password so I will edit the name call it password field and the same for repeat password I'm gonna call it repeat password field uh, you can change the variables by clicking on the text field and clicking on the variable and click on edit or simply because those are variables created in the screen you can select the screen and in the variables panel you will have those variables are created and from here you can also change it so you can do it both ways but it's faster when you do it from the details panel okay so if you scroll to the end of the text field you will find something called validator now the email field here is the name of the controller object that we just changed and validator here is like when you want to add some rules to validate this text field so I will add a validator when you click on the plus you'll see this arrow so there's something below the validator so automatically it adds a message that this field is required so if the user wanted to create an account and did not type an email it will not even fire the request to Firebase it will actually tell the user that you did not even put an email so this is the first thing and then if you want to add new rules you click on add validator and here you can see some of the uh, templates for uh, uh, the validators which is like um, if you want to have a minimum length maximum length if you want the field to be an email which is the one in this case so I'm gonna choose it so this validator will check if this is a right email so if the, it has the at if it's like a right email uh, written in the nice uh, in the in, in the email format I would say and if I want to add new rules I can do that but I only need the check that it's a right email now for the password field I want to add a field that actually if you want to add a field there is a one that should be added all the time which is required so you cannot like add a validator that you want the password to be eight item yeah, like eight, eight characters at least without actually saying that this field is required so when you add a validator this one adds by default which is like this field is required and then you add the extra rules so if you add let's say the minimum length validator and here you put the message so this message will appear when the validator is not checked so when the if I don't pass a pa if I did not type a password I will see the message field is required now if I type the password but it was less than six characters I will see a message that let's say password is too small for example okay now the the minimum length here by default it checks if the character is uh, it should be like more than six characters but what if you want to add another rule so in the last option it's actually you can add your regular expression which is called regex or regex that uh, here you can actually exactly uh, tell how you want the information in the field to look like you can even use ChatGPT. you can even google it uh, you can literally check anything in the text field not just the size and those things you can actually put really advanced uh, expressions to check if the field matches those expressions like you can say like oh I want the password to be eight characters I want to start with a capital letter I want it to have like one character at least you can do this by passing uh, a reg uh, rejects validator and I actually have a validator here I mean it's difficult to memorize it so I'm gonna I bought it from ChatGPT actually and if I want to remove let's say I, I, if I don't want the password right now I want to add a, a, the regex validator and I will paste it here so this valid this regex expression just tells that the field should be eight characters or more so if I uh, put the field here uh, I here can in, in the message I can actually specify what the message should be so I can say like uh, password should be eight at least for example and I can do the same thing for repeat password but uh, which is like but the, the for repeat password actually it's it's a different it's a different validation and this is because in the repeat password you don't just want to check on the information inside you want also to check 
uh, if the what's a password here matches a password in the other field. So this is not done from the validator. This is done from logic. And it's kind of advanced, so I'm not going to do it uh, in this video. I'm going to do it in another video. So here I'm going to keep it just like email and password. And I can, e I can even re remove the repeat password from here. And uh, OK, so I have the email. I have the password. Now I did put the validator. So now the next step is you need to add a form wrapper. So what is a form wrapper? It's a wrapper that you add above the text fields that are together. And this form gives you something called a key. Now, when you access this key from the logic, you can actually tell the key to check if all the validators in all the text fields underneath that wrapper matches the rules that they have. So let's actually uh, see this in action. So here I have those two text fields. So above them both, I need to add a wrapper. So here I already have them in a group, and the group is a column. So above the column, which is here, I can add a wrapper called form. So by adding that, the form itself can see the validators inside the form. So I can see the email field, I can see the password field. Now, why I can, can I like put the form in the full screen? Actually, you can. So you need to put the form in any level above the text fields. But let's say if you have two forms in the same screen, uh, like email and password on one side, and you have like something else on the other side, you can wrap each form, uh, each, I mean, group of text fields with its own form, and each one will give you a key, and you can use this key to validate, to validate them like uh, uh, separately. But here I have only one form, and I need one key, uh, and then I need to check if those form like matches the condition. So I don't, I can put it like here above the group, and I can even put it like here in the top level, it should be fine. But best practice is to put it above exactly where you need it. So I'm going to put it here. And when you drop this form, you will see that in the variables in the screen, you have something called form key. So this is a key, which is connected to the wrapper of the form. And in the logic, you can tell the form to check for the validation of all the text fields underneath it. So let's do that. So in the create account, I have it as a custom button. So I made a group which is like a row, and I added this, uh, the text and the icon. But to make it clickable, I will add a gesture detector as a wrapper. So when I do this, I add the clickable functionality to the bottom. And when I click on, on tap, I can add the logic. So when the user tap on that button or on that widget, this action will happen. So let me actually uh, put it on the full screen. And here, I can actually, okay, let me go to the locals, and I will see the form key. So if I bring the object, which is a form key, and I click on plus, and I call the current state, and I call validate. So this is a function, I mean, this is a statement and an expression. What does that mean? A statement that it does something. So when you call this validate, it will actually check the validation in the uh, text fields underneath the form. And if they don't match, or the ones that don't match, will show an error message. So you're doing something. This is why you can connect it directly here, because it's a statement. But also, it returns something. So if you like hover here, it returns a Boolean. So you can use this field inside like if statement, for example, and you can connect it to the condition. And when you do that, you're passing the condition, which is like, does uh, like is like 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 did the uh, like if the fo if the all text fields underneath the form matches the validators? So if if the if the result is true, meaning that all the forms have valid input, and if it's false, meaning one or more of the forms is not having a valid input. So the first thing I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to remove the if statement, and I will just call validate. So I want to make you see what's going to happen. So if I click on play, and let me put like, let me put nothing in the beginning. So if I click here, I'll be like, okay, feed is required, which is the first validator. Now, if I put something, for example, and I click on here, then I see invalid email. So since there is some content here, it passed the first validator, which is field is required. But 
this is not a valid email. So it, in the in the second validator, it showed the invalid uh, email. Same thing for password. So now feed is required because there's no password. If I put like a short password and I click, and then I see the message password should be at least uh, eight characters. Okay, so what if I put a correct, let's say I'm gonna put Noah test app at gmail.com. I'm gonna put like a password from one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, the most secure password ever. And I click on create account, then no error will appear because there is no, uh, I mean, all the input in the fields matches the validator. So there was nothing, uh, there was no rule that was broken with this input.